Okay, so general equilibrium is the first of our three equilibrium units, okay? We're going to do general first, uh, then we're going to actually skip and do uh, chapter 16, which is solubility equilibrium, and then we're going to save our acid-base equilibrium for last, because it's the probably the more challenging of the three types, okay? I uh, believe it's chapter 13. I'm not 1,000% sure, but I think it's chapter 13. Yes. How many other units do we have? Five. Oh, that, I can do that number. I can yes. Do that. We have five units yet left. We have the three units of equilibrium. We have thermodynamics, and then we have we end with electrochemistry. And then, then we uh, start our review. Is our test for this going to be in like two weeks? No, it's going to be tomorrow. It is going to be a week from Monday, the 5th. It's going to be yesterday. <laughs> okay. All right, you just appeared on the video. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so the nature of equilibrium state, okay? Uh, equilibrium, of course, is the state where the forward and the reverse reaction uh, is equal, Okay. So if the conditions, uh, the concentrations of the products in the reactants are going to remain constant when equilibrium is established, okay? And, of course, that's at constant temperature. Um, when we were doing stoichiometry problems, we always assumed that the reaction went 100% to completion, uh, but in actuality, that's not the case. There's a, a large portion of the reactions that don't go to, equal, uh, don't go to completion, but they reach an equilibrium state where you've, it appears that nothing's going on, Okay. <laughs> So an example of uh, equilibrium that you would be aware of is anybody when you were kids or saw the little, um, no, tr what are those things? I just, <sighs> not the aquarium. I know what you're talking about. It's, it's like oh, the lava lamp. What are you guys? <laughs> I know what you're talking Tarant about. Tarantula. Tarantula. No, why can't I think of the name? Tarantula. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you've got those closed system. You never have to put food or anything in the little things, the little creatures that are in there. Yeah. Yeah, we got that now. I just could not come up with the word in my head. What is that? It's a terrarium. Terrarium. It's like, a clo it's like an aquarium but not water, but it's a closed system. There's usually things growing in it, but then the water cycle happens in there because it's closed system, so nothing escapes. So sometimes, uh, you know, you have, like, little creatures in there and water and plants yeah okay so that would be an example of something at equilibrium although it took me a while to come up with that word okay so um you're forget i mean you need to remember that temperature is uh, a factor in equilibrium okay so reactions are reversible we know that already we always indicate that with a double arrow uh dynamic equilibrium uh, indicates that the reaction is proceeding in the forward and in the re re reverse simultaneously, okay? <clears throat> Once equilibrium is established, it's in equal rate. This also keeps the concentrations uh, and the, of the products uh, and reactants constant, but constant does not mean equal, okay? Constant does not mean equal. They're not always equal. Most of the time they're not. Uh, the natures of the properties of equilibrium state are the same no matter which direction of the approach, forward or reverse. So here's a uh, reaction that we're gonna, of steam and carbon monoxide in a closed vessel. I think that's on the next page right here. And so at the beginning of the reaction here, you can see as it's, as it's a, right here is where the reaction is starting. Why isn't that right? They're starting. And then when you reach this part, this is said where equilibrium is established. So after that, the, it looks like nothing's going on in the system, when in fact it is actually the forward and the reverse is happening at, at the equal rates. And so um, your overall concentrations are not uh, changed. Okay? So K is something called the equilibrium constant that we are going to have to calculate. Okay? Okay. Um, We'll show you in a minute how to do that, but there's a significance of K, and that is if K is very uh, large, meaning it's greater than 1, the larger it is, then it's going to favor the products, meaning you're going to make more products at equilibrium. If it's less than 1 or very, very small, you're going to favor the reactants. And so the reaction is uh, going to say it lies in favor of the products or lies in favor of the reactants. In chem, um, pre-AP chem, we did a tiny bit of equilibrium. We mostly did Le Chatelier, or Le Chatelier, however you want to say it. And that's where we said, oh, if I add 
you know, gas to the system, it shifts towards, you know, least products. Or if I increase the temperature, depending on if it's endothermic or exothermic, it, we said it shifted. Did you remember that? Shift left, shift right, no shift, that kind of thing. So we'll get to that at the end of this chapter. We did not actually calculate K or talk about the equilibrium constant. We just kind of did the little miniature of Le Chatelier, which affects your equilibrium position. Okay? Any questions so far? You got the concept of equilibrium down? Um, yes? Well, that's different. We can disturb our equilibrium, but the system will reestablish equilibrium. And that's what Le Chatelier is about. It's the, how the system adjusts to stress. So if you stress the system, it will uh, make adjustments to reestablish equilibrium. Okay? <laughs> okay, yeah. So the equilibrium expression, this is how we calculate it. So we have this general equation, A plus B, C, D. So it's going to be calculated by K is going to be products over reactants raised to their coefficients. So you don't have to figure out what the coefficients are or the superscripts are going to be the um, coefficients in the problem. Okay. So again, what do the brackets mean? Concentration. Concentration okay. Um, there are several different types of equilibrium constants. Uh, sometimes they'll just do K for general. But if you have Kc, they're talking about um, the concentrations. Keq sometimes is the general. And then in a second, we'll see Kp, like this, K little p, and that is you can put pressures. So if you have a Kp, you'll put the uh, pressures raised to their coefficients, not, uh, not the concentrations. Okay? So let's talk about what goes in the equilibrium expression. What, if you had to guess what doesn't go in the equilibrium expression, what would you guess? Wait, what well, they don't appear in the overall reaction, so that would that's kind of no liquids and solids. Do liquids and solids have a concentration? No, no they're pure substances, so they don't they don't show up in in the equilibrium about, expression. Like, aqueous. aqueous is not a liquid. Well, I mean, it is a liquid, but it's not classified as a liquid. Aqueous and gases have concentrations. But when we're talking about gases, we're actually going to be using pressures in our Kp value. Okay? So uh, here are your values. Kc is used for concentration aqueous. Uh, Kp is what we're going to use for partial pressures of gases. But oftentimes, we just write K, big K. Okay? Okay? Okay. 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 So, <laughs> we can do that all day. Don't do that. Uh, pure solids, of course, do not uh, appear in the expression, especially when we get to KSP, which is solubility product. Uh, you don't show, the solids do not show up. Also, pure liquids. So, if you see pure liquid water, you leave it out, okay? Um, water is a pure liquid or reactant does not appear uh, because... Pure water's concentration is actually 55.5 molar. Did you know that water had a molarity? 55.5 molarity. Uh, but it will uh, not change significantly when you're talking ab about these. Okay? Uh, weak acids and weak bases is a whole other chapter on equilibrium, so we will not discuss it at this time. We may mention it, uh, but we will do those calculations. That's a much uh, more involved unit, so we save it all that. Same, same thing with solubility of salts. Um, that's, we'll do that when we get to KSP and solubility product and all that comes up. So that's going to be sometimes some uh, AP classes do general and KSP together and test over it all at once. I'm going to do it as two, like instead of one larger unit, two smaller units and do two different tests. Okay. So the more test grades we have, hopefully the better the average is. Okay. So we are going to write just the equilibrium expression for this. So just products over reactants, right? So I'm going to say the concentration of NO2 raised to the fourth. Y'all should write this in in your notes, even though it's over there in the margin. And then H2O, it's a gas, so it will appear. If it was a liquid, it would not.
So that's what the equilibrium expression would look like for that particular reaction. Okay. So obviously we're going to do more than write the, re the things. We're going to use it in a little bit. Okay. Um, if you didn't <clears throat> write down on that last page when I showed you what it was, you might want to write in product over reactant. So you can kind of get used to doing that. <laughs> product over reactant. Okay. Okay, so this one says write the expression of K and KP for the following processes. Uh, the decomposition of solid phosphorus pentachloride to liquid phosphorus trichloride and chlorine gas. So before you can write the expression, what are you going to need to do? Write it out, right. So I've got solid phosphorus pentachloride, so that's going to be PCl5 plus liquid, so that's an S, plus liquid, so P, oh, it's going, it's yielding, isn't it? D, yeah, decomposition, sorry. So I need to balance that. It's already balanced, okay? So what would its uh, K uh, expression look like? No zeros. That's it. Because liquids and solids do not appear, so that would just be its equilibrium expression. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, and B, what would that reaction look like? Uh, copper 2 pentahydrate. Y'all remember that's where you do the little dot? H 5H2O. And we're decomposing that. That is a solid. So we're decomposing that into the CuSO4 as a solid. And then we'll drive off the water vapor. And that's a gas. So then that one would just look like uh, K is equal to H2O. and then we'd raise it to the fifth power, okay? Now, if we were to not have the um, concentration, but because it's a gas, we would do Kp for pressure is equal to P of H2O to the fifth power, which would be the partial pressure. So, like, if they gave us the partial pressure, we'd plug those in. So, for when you have gases and you're dealing with pressures, you're going to treat them just like concentrations. Do not put brackets around the pressure, okay, just put the pressure and raise it, okay, if you want to put some parentheses around them just to say, hey, I'm going to raise this to help you know, that's fine, but do not put brackets, because what do brackets symbolize for us? Concentration. Concentration, so don't put that, and usually by putting the P, we're signifying partial pressure, okay, so we're good with expressing that, I hope, because that's pretty straightforward, okay, do we need to review nomenclature? Um, you should know basic nomenclature, yes. Okay, so changing the stoichiometric coefficients, okay, once you, once you figure out what K is, if you change some things, that you can recalculate K. Um, so when the stoichiometric coefficients of an imbalance equations are multiplied by some factor, the K is raised to the power, so you have, you call it K to raised to the N, okay? Um, and then if you reverse the equation, so let's say K is established for the forward, and then you reverse it, then you're going to take the reciprocal of K, and that'll be your new K value. Sometimes they'll call it K prime, K subprime, you know. And then if you're adding equations, uh, so let's say you add some equations together, then you're going to multiply Ks by each other. So let's look at a couple of examples for that, okay? So here we have the following uh, concentration by the way, the formation of ammonia, I, I think we've said it in the past, but I want to make sure you understand that's called the Haber process because sometimes that might show up. Um, the Haber process is the production of uh, meth, uh, eth um, ammonia. Why can't I think? So let's write what we know the equation to be. Yeah, for fertilizer, so now we can make so much fertilizer. 
Well, they also used it in the war to make other things. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. we okay, the so these are all gases. G, 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 all gases. So that's its normal uh, stoichiometric relationship. So we want to calculate the value uh, for this reaction at 127 degrees Celsius. So they're giving us the concentrations. So we're going to plug them in to solve for K. So NH3 should be raised to the second power. And then N2, and then H2 raised to the third power. So now we're going to plug in these values. So we have 3.1. And we're going to raise that to the second power, divided by 8.5 times 10 to the negative 1. And then 3.1 times 10 to the negative 3, raised to the third power. And when you plug all that into your calculator, hopefully you know how to do that, at this point in your life, you should get 3.8 times 10 to the 4. There are no units on K. Okay, it's unitless. It's one of the few unitless things we have in chemistry. Okay, that is a very large K. So which direction is favored, products or reactants? Products, because it's great. It's way greater than one. So definitely the products would be uh, favored. But what it says, calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for the following reaction, which is basically the reaction flipped, right? And so what did we say? If we reverse it, what do we do? So the K, we call it, we do K prime, so we do 1 over K, and so then it would be 2.6 times 10 to the negative fifth, which kind of makes sense since the forward reaction was really, really high value of K, we would expect that the reverse would be very, very low. Okay, that makes sense. And then the next one says, uh, calculate the value of the equilibrium constant by this equation. So what did we basically do to that equation? <coughs> we, ha we halved it. Okay. So what we could do to get, we, sometimes we'll do like that, is we could say K raised to the 0. 0.5. That's half, right? So then we would say the 3.8 times 10 to the fourth raised to the half, or the 0. 0.5, and we would get 1.95 times 10 to the second. Why do I have a 4 written, though? Oh, because I, I, think I, I think it's supposed to be the 4. Someone do that for me. I, I have two different numbers written down, and I don't know why. Someone do 3.8 times 10 to the fourth raised to the 0.5. Tell me what it is. I don't know where I've laid my calculator. Anyone? Uh, Please? Uh, yeah, it's 1.95. So what's the exponent? Second. Okay, so I, okay. Well, apparently I switched colors there. Okay? So that's how you do those. So there's a section in one of your worksheets that's how you do that. Okay? I am, but I may stop recording it if y'all don't start participating. I could I could have just done this as a flip lesson and I could have spent this time grading. Okay, so here is these results uh, for sulfur dioxide uh, to form oxygen and gaseous <laughs> sulfur trioxide. So we have to write that equation first. So we would have SO2. These are all gases plus oxygen yields SO3. So I need to balance that. So how would I balance it? Two. Yeah, two and a two. Yeah. And then nothing in front of oxygen. So our equilibrium expression is going to look like this. SO3 raised to the two over SO2 raised to the two oh, and oxygen. So basically, you're just going to plug and go. So experiment one, K is going to be equal to uh, 
and I get 4.36. And then for experiment two, you can plug in the new parameters. And I get 4.32 which shows you that no matter what the conditions, it's the K value is pretty close to constant, okay? Which it should be when you reach equilibrium. Okay, does so everybody have that before I go to the next slide? Almost. Okay, so now let's talk about KC and KP, okay? Because you can uh, relate them. They are not interchangeable, okay? So there's this equation right here that you can use uh, to figure out if you've got one, how you can figure out the other one, okay? Um, the biggest thing here is people forget which order it goes. So remember it, it's good to be PC, politically correct. So that'll help you remember the order. So KP is equal to KC times RT raised to the delta N, and delta N is gonna be gas produced minus gas of reacting. So total uh, moles of gas produced minus total number of gases reacting. Ms. Uh -huh. what, is, what does KC stand for? Concentration. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> concentration. Pressure and pressure. Yeah, yeah, and then pressure is the P. And then when we get to uh, acid bases, KA is acid, KB is base, uh, KSP is solubility product, and that's going to be for your uh, it, insoluble uh, salts. Okay, so um, if KP and KC can be equal to each other, if your number of moles and number of, of uh, product and reactant are equal, because then if you raise something to the zero power, what is it? One. One. Okay, they like to ask that as a multiple choice question. When would they be equal or figure out when it would be equal? And it's when your total number of gases produced is equal to the of what was uh, reacted because anytime you raise something to the zero power, it is no. Okay, uh, so there's your politically correct to help you remember uh, the order. KP is equal to KC. Okay, so I think we have an example. We do. Um, luckily, they give us the equation there. There's the pressures at equilibrium were found to be these right here. So calculate Kp. Okay. Um, this is going to be essentially just like we just did for Kc. It's just now we're using pressures. So we're going to say 1.2 raised to the second over... 5.0 times 10 to the negative 2 times 3.0 times 10 to the negative 1. So now if you were doing this on the AP exam, you should write out Kp is equal to the pressure of NOCl raised to the second, like that, so that they know where you're, where and why you're doing what you're doing. I forgot to square that. Oops, I put the two in the wrong place. I'm sorry. <coughs> and it comes out to 1920. 1920. Although if you were trying to do sig figs, how many sig figs do I need? Two. two. So 1.9 times 10 to the 3. Again, K is very large, so we would favor the products. And then here is one where uh, we can calculate uh, Kp from Kc because they're not giving us uh, oh use the value from up there. Okay, so this says calculate Kp, calculate the value uh, for the reaction. So we're going to have three moles going to two moles. 
So what is our delta N going to be? Negative one. Because it's moles produced minus moles uh, reacted. So it's going to be negative one moles for our delta N. So we have KP is equal to KC RT delta N. We have calculated KP in the last problem, so it's going to be 1920 is equal to KC. And then we're going to have the 0.0821. Liters, mole, atmos, no. I did that backwards, didn't I? Atmosphere, yeah, what the heck? As soon as I wrote that, I'm like, something's not right. Liters times atmosphere over mole K. Our temperature is 298. And we're going to raise that to the negative 1. So we should get... 46829, but then we want two sig figs, it's going to be that. Okay? So that's how you use that equation. I'm going to take you through reaction quotient and then we're going to stop. Almost done. Because reaction quotient is calculated the same way as K, it's just not at equilibrium, basically, is what that is in a nutshell. Okay, so we said a while ago, if you're much greater than, if you're one or greater, you favor the products. If you are uh, less than one, you re favor the reactants. That is when you have established equilibrium. But a lot of times we don't know where, it, if equilibrium has been established. Okay, um, and so we're going to use something called the reaction quotient. Okay, and that is the, um, for a system that is not at equilibrium. Okay, but look how you calculate it the exact same way, okay? And so what you can do is you can compare your Q value to your K value to see if you're at equilibrium. So obviously if Q is equal to K, then you are at equilibrium. Makes sense, right? If Q is less than K, you have not made it to equilibrium, okay? So the reactants are gonna continue and make more product. So you're going to have the forward reaction because you want to make more product. If Q is greater than K, then the reactants uh, will be formed, reformed from the product. Okay? They like to ask questions about Q versus K. So this little section right here, you need to memorize. Okay? Q equal to K is easy. That means no shift. Okay? If it is Q is great, uh, less than, you're going to say shift right. You can remember that. It's going to shift to the right, meaning more products are going to be made. If it is greater than K, it's going to shift left, which means more reactants will be made. We good with that explanation? Only one more problem, and then I'm stopping. Thank you, Jared, for participating in this lecture. I appreciate it. You're a model student. No, a model student. I'll say that he's, you're a gentleman and a scholar. How's that? A gentleman and a scholar. Okay, so for this synthesis of ammonia, oh, look, that reaction comes up again. Know that reaction, okay? Predict the direction in which the system will shift, okay? Um, we calculated, oh, it gives us right here. Here's K. So K is going to be equal to uh, 6 point zero times 10 to the negative 2. Here's our reaction, just to be a 3H2, 2NH3. They're all gases, okay? So we need to calculate Q. So I do that math and I get Q is equal to 1.25 times 10 to the 7. It is much greater. Now, 
instead of just saying which way it's going to shift, when you're writing this on an AP exam, I want you to say, you can use this little symbol, therefore, or you can say since Q is greater than K, the reaction will shift left towards the reactants. <coughs> okay? That's how you would uh, justify or explain on a test. Okay? The next one, same thing, plug in the new things. And I'm not going to do all that because you can do that, but plug in the new concentrations everywhere to the same reaction quotient. And you'll find that Q is going to be equal to 6.0 times 10 to the negative second. So Q is equal to K, so no shift, or system is at equilibrium. And then the last one, when you plug all those new numbers in, you get 0 .002, so Q is less than K, so it would shift right to make more products. And then, of course, once equilibrium was established, there would be no more shifting. Okay? Any questions? All right, that's the end for today.